So the first draft of the human genome, it was completed at the turn of the millennium. Um, it was a little over 20 years ago. The announcement was made from the White House and the president at the time, President Bill Clinton, he referred to the genome as, quote, the most important, most wondrous map ever produced by humankind. The sequencing of the human genome, it, it unveiled what you might call an instruction booklet for every cell in the body. And it's truly amazing. But we did not know how to interpret the instructions, right? Because the language, it was written in a way that was largely unknown to us. We didn't understand the patterns. What was actually encoded in the genome? Right? That's been the work of the last 20 years. Right? How does it work and what does it teach us about the human body and maybe our inclinations and penchant for certain traits and diseases? The word genome, it literally means a collection or a compendium of genes. Right? But it turns out we don't have nearly as many genes as we once thought we did. Before this kind of genome era of science, we thought we might have 100,000 genes, maybe more, maybe lots more. But by studying the full genomic sequence, we learned that we have about 20,000, right? depending on how you count. Even the genome of rice, the rice we eat, has close to 50,000 genes. Right? So when it comes to the number of genes we have in our DNA, we don't even hold a candle to rice. In fact, we now know that genes, depending on exactly how you define them, they constitute about 2% of the human genome, and that's being generous. What is encoded in the remaining 98%? It's what some once called the dark matter of the genome, right? sort of analogous to dark matter in space, perhaps. But it turns out that a lot of it is filled with what we call DNA switches or they're probably better referred to as dials or rheostats. You know, you can walk into a room and you can kind of dial the temperature up and down or the light up and down. There are tons of these kinds of dials that are, throughout, that are found throughout our genome. They're not genes themselves, but they're important for controlling when, where, and how much nearby genes are turned on, right? So they're regulators, if you will. Right? So again, with that room analogy, they're not the rooms themselves, right, where certain things might happen, certain functions might exist, but they are controlling the lighting in the room and the, the other aspects of the room, okay? So if you think of genes as tools that we have in our toolkit as humans, it turns out that biological complexity of an organism isn't really determined by the number of tools the genome has, but rather by when, where, and how those tools are used. Right? So that's a really interesting nuance that I think is worth reflecting on, meditating on. And I've done that, and I've found that this is really an interesting sort of parable for spiritual life. There's a lesson here. It's not how many skills and talents I have so that I might sit around comparing myself to someone else, but rather it's when and how I choose to use whatever it is that I do have that builds the kingdom of God. Right? that I choose to use what I have for the sake of others above myself, that's really where the action is, right? Not just in thinking about how many different talents I have or how many different things I'm good at.